What's up, HSM? My name is Courtney Dowdy. I'm the high school pastor here. My name is Jordan, and I am the high school associate pastor here. And we're super excited to be joining y'all again this week because we know that there's been a lot going on in our world. We know that it's been in your feeds a lot. Uh, and I think it's it's time for us to like really have an important conversation about this because mm -hmm. I know that it's on your minds. I know that you have questions. And we, as as your pastors, we don't want to ever tell you what to think, but we do believe that we have a responsibility to, to help shape how you think about things um, as you're looking to become more like Jesus. We right. want you to be engaging in conversations healthily. We want you to be asking good questions um, and, and thinking deeper about, about things in the world around you. So we've come up with a couple questions. We know that it's not all encompassing, but, but I think that it is a good start to a yeah. conversation um, with us. So. Jordan, just curious, with everything going on in the world, like how, how have you been handling all of this? Uh, there's a lot. I mean, it's it's first off, it feels weird to ask me like how I'm handling this <laughs> because sure. it's kind of like a couple nights ago, I live in Anaheim and there was protests and everything happening uh, just pretty much 30, 40 feet around mm -hmm. me, around our cul-de-sac, and it was chaos outside um, all around, but inside our house, we were pretty okay. Yeah. I wasn't really affected. And I feel like that's kind of a picture of sometimes how I feel when I talk, have to talk about this issue because yeah. like it's yeah. stuff that's very important and actually affects a lot of people, but I haven't had that kind of oppression in my life or mistreatment. And for me overall, I just feel upset. I feel upset personally. I feel convicted that I need to watch a video mm. of, of, of men and women from the black community being murdered for me to be woken up to this idea of racism. Because I don't know that firsthand. In my life, I don't see that. And I also get upset right now that it's so controversial. Like the most controversial, it feels like the most controversial thing to say right now is that black lives matter. Hmm. Like everybody wants to correct that right now. Like, no, 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 you're supposed to say sure. this. You should say all <laughs> lives matter. Like, uh, why is that a controversy to say? But I also get upset because when I look at, as a pastor, I, I want to see I want to see, you know, God's way. I want his, his, his justice to reign supreme, and I want mm -hmm. that to happen in our dialogues. But I get upset because I see a lot of outrage. I see a lot of people trying to correct the Black Lives Movement by saying it should be all lives. And they're telling other people literally how to, how to say something when they really should be listening to what others have to say. Mm -hmm. And I see a lot of outrage. I don't really see a lot of dialogue. I see a lot of people having the same rebuttals, yeah calculating in their head and I just yeah. I get upset and there's a lot more to that but that's just kind of a, a little glimpse at what I'm hitting at but that's just my take so what is your take how are you handling everything that's going on I mean like honestly so it's like it's interesting hearing all of these things because like I've, I've had these feelings you know for most of my life yeah um, so like in this moment right now, like, to be honest with you, I'm, I'm exhausted. Mm -hmm. I'm exhausted spiritually. I'm exhausted physically and mentally. It just seeing and experiencing it all in real time, like with the rest of the world, you know? And like, I've even gotten to the point where I've actually had to delete most of my social media uh, just to take a pause because a lot of this stuff is triggering yeah. um, for me because it's it's not new. <laughs> it's yeah. like nothing about racism or this conversation is new. It's just, oh, yeah. now everyone can see it. <laughs> they can see what the experience has been right. like. And There's so like that quote that says, racism isn't getting worse, it's just getting filmed. Right, right. I don't know who said it, but brilliant <laughs> like genuinely yeah um and so like a lot of people would be asking the question like you might even ask him right now like why are we talking about race mm. like isn't isn't this divisive like why are we furthering that conversation and, and what i would say to that just the reality is mm. um that talking about race itself is not divisive racism like its definition is divisive right and so for us to like ignore that conversation for us to like actively just push that one aside is we we actually are pursuing division. We would need to talk about this so we don't land in spaces of further division. We are actually pursuing what what Christ prayed for, <laughs> what, that um, the Father would make us one as as he and the Father were one. Mm. You know what I mean? So yeah. like, that's why we're having these conversations. Right. And I think too, I think for me, one of the reasons that we're having this conversation is that this is not just an issue for the black community. This isn't just an issue for social justice warriors or whatever. This is a gospel issue. Like, this is a fundamental gospel issue. Like, Jesus said you need to love your neighbor as you love yourself. What that basically means in this context is that you want to see how you are treated. You want to see that to kind of relay over, to overflow over to how other people are treated. Mm -hmm. And the fact is, is that 
there's a lot of mistreatment going on and then that should be something that makes you upset like the fact is like the gospel is something that everybody's made right everybody's made in god's image and i think too i think of this while we're talking about this is the fact that that people are hurting people are hurting people For sure. people are crying out and i think the bible also hits on this idea of romans chapter 12 verse 15 it says to rejoice with those mm. who rejoice in mourn yeah. with those who mourn not argue with them no no <laughs> like, yeah. if someone's hurting you don't tell them <laughs> hey no like no, no no you listen first and then you yeah. speak second and i think for us as a community i think that we need to know that the reason that we're talking about this is because people are hurting and i think there's so much to that and i think um that hits on this idea of justice too about mm. all these kind of things about what does what does god's word say about justice and i yeah. think for us like that's a big question so what would you say for you yeah because i i think like trying to like when i was on instagram there's a lot of like justice for fill in the blank uh, or no yeah. justice no peace like that's a big thing and and i love like recognizing like hey this is a a gospel issue because like the Lord has spoke so much about justice. And I can go back to page one of Genesis that literally yeah. says, hey, you were created in God's image and like you actually have a right to dignity. Like that is what is right. Like that is what justice is like. And it would be great if everyone in the world at all times- You're telling me not everyone believe that. No, no, like at mm. all times and okay. all places actually yeah. just adhere to like, hey, I'm gonna affirm your dignity. Right. at all times like that's just not what's happening and yeah. that's why these videos are coming out Gosh. um and like the lord time and time again is saying hey my goal is for righteousness and justice to reign like, right. throughout my creation and we see that with the many characters that are like real people in scripture that have come up it's, like tells abraham like hey, i want you to do what is right i want you to pursue justice right. he tells michael like this is what actually the will of of the lord is for you like, I want you to walk humbly with your God. And that involves doing justice, right. living with mercy. Yeah. You know what I mean? And the cross itself, like the cross reconciles back to God and to one another. And that's, that's um, what I would call restorative justice. It's not like, oh, you just that you did something wrong. It's like, no, you are two completely separate things. And I'm, I'm making it right because that is how creation was supposed to survive. That was how yeah. it was supposed to exist, you know? Right. What it, what, you have, I know you love the Lord and you love scripture. And so I know you have some thoughts on what yeah. God's word might be saying about justice in this moment. Yeah, I think there's so much to kind of hit on that topic. But I think of two primary kind of things. And it hits on this idea we're talking about of like uh, God is going to bring justice about. Mm. You know, and I think you get the first fruits of that with uh, Christ's death on the cross. Mm -hmm. And the fact is, is that he didn't die on the cross and then everything's right. Like you can just, yeah. that's not the case. You can look at the news for two seconds and you see right. stuff happen that you know this isn't right. So I think for us, we need to know that justice, true justice isn't going to occur in this life. Hmm. We're going to forever see injustice. However, we know that God's going to make it right in heaven. But what does that mean for us? Like, I think that shouldn't mean, oh, let's just sit back, chill out, have a burrito, <laughs> watch the Lakers come back and win the title. Shout out to the Lakers. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, like, just because it's, it's not going to be completed doesn't mean that can't be something that we work through. For sure. You know, God is making things new and we can be part of that process. And I think for us as Christians, it kind of gets on this idea that I think in Isaiah chapter one, verse 17, and it mm. says this, it says, learn to do good, seek justice. Mm. It doesn't say, hey, wait on justice for the <laughs> Lord. Wait for God to do the yeah. work. No, no, no. It says seek justice yeah. and, oh yeah, correct oppression. Hmm. Bring, bring justice to the fatherless. Like go to people, bring the justice to them. Uh, please the widow's cause. So the fact is, is that justice is going to happen in this life. However, we need to be on the forefront of trying to seek out justice. Yeah. And that kind of leads us to this last question of like, for you as a high school student, like what, what do you do? Like what? What can you do? And I think I want to hear your thoughts. What, what do you think oh, they no, should do? You tell them what to do, because I know you have the answer. So okay, just... yeah, I got the first. I, I'm going first. My bad. Uh, yeah, so I think uh, I think honestly, I think the first thing that we can do, and it's not something that takes a lot of work. Hmm. It's not something that you got to go get a good degree at to figure out how to do, is that you stand with your brothers and sisters in the black community. You stand with them. You know, and I even think of right now, the black community is being mistreated. And I think of in, in John chapter four, Jesus was walking by and he saw a Samaritan woman being mistreated. 
And I and I and it gives me goosebumps because what did Jesus do? Samaritans were mistreated. Looking at it later, they they were not liked people. And Jesus right. stood with them. Right. Jesus stood with this woman. And I think for us, we can stand with our brothers and sisters in the black community, even if they don't believe in Christ. They are still made in God's image. And I think for us that we need to stand with them and we need to listen. We need to yeah. hear them out and also get educated from them and just stand with them and support them. doesn't mean we have to agree with everything because I don't agree with everything I think. <laughs> so I'm not going to agree with anybody. You know, I, first you know what I'm saying? So like you don't have to agree with everything to stand with someone. I'm sorry. That's called being a rela- in a relationship with anyone. So right. I think to stand with people is the first step. But what, what's your, what's your, what do you think they should do? Okay, I'll answer now. No, so I mean, I think you said something really good there. Um, we're not just, like, I remember back in the day when you had those braces, what would Jesus do? Like, don't just do what you think Jesus would do. Do what Jesus did. Ooh. Like, literally do what Dang, Jesus okay. did. okay, that's good. That's you know good. what I mean? Yeah. Thank you, that'll preach right there. <laughs> Got it. Uh, do what Jesus did, you know? I mean, Jesus was... Uh, was a man who actually interacted with people, saw them for who they were and how God saw them Mm. um, and listened to them. He asked questions and listened. Like, I think it's very important that we are people who um, listen before we speak. We educate ourselves. We are taking postures of learners. We want to be people who are learning more about ourselves, more about our brothers and sisters, and more about our creator. And, And that is going to inform the next steps that we start taking. Yeah. Because everyone's next step is not the same. And I'm not gonna sit here and think that everyone's gonna go out and do the exact same thing. That's may not be what the Lord's calling you to do. Right, I think you know of this mean? idea that not all of us are gonna be Peter's Pauls. Right. Sometimes we're gonna be Phillips or Nathaniel's or Thomas's. Like there's different, there's that diversity that you, maybe you don't have to do what other people do, but you gotta listen to the Lord. Absolutely, and it's, all of those roles are super important. And so we want to be people who are are taking postures of learners, but we also do want to be people who are taking the next step. And that does involve us taking a very evaluative look at Mm -hmm. ourselves. We do need to be paying attention to the ways that we have mistreated or we have perpetuated um, mistreatment of our brothers and sisters. We Mm -hmm. do need to be paying attention um, to the patterns and habits that are not like in line with us following Jesus Mm -hmm. and do the work of not allowing those things to reign. I, I think of Romans 12 as the reason that I'm a believer today um, that says, uh, don't be conformed to the patterns of this world, but mm. be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Right. That means that you, if you say yes to following Jesus, you're allowing the Holy Spirit to actively continue transforming how you look at yourself and the world around you. Mm. And so it's super important, so, so important. It's critical um, to actually embrace the call to do that. Like. Paul literally says, I urge you, brothers and sisters, to get after this. Yeah. That is what our life is supposed to be like. And I realize that this is a short conversation. You know, right. like we have not solved racism. We have not answered all the questions. Solved, guys. Fixed it. <laughs> no, but we, we hope that this starts really good conversations. And we, as your pastors, we want um, for you to feel safe. Right. to having these conversations. We want you to feel safe to ask questions, to ask us for help. We want to be praying with you and praying for you. Mm. Um, so I, I hope that this, this conversation was challenging, but also like encouraging, um, yeah. knowing that the Lord is calling you uh, into something great. Like your story is not finished and this moment is important in, in shaping how, how you continue to live the rest of your days. Um, so I hope this has been great and been helpful. We'll see you guys soon. Yeah.